So I just have to ask about woolly mammoths because okay. I just think the project is so, <laughs> so, it's so exciting. It's such an interesting project. Um, so the, I, I saw you, you did a talk. Um, you were going to do a proof of concept in a pig model, um, and then you're going to try and try it with a with an elephant. Have you? So where are we on that? I mean, have you done it in the pig model? And well, well we don't didn't really what? do a model. Uh, oh. the, the pig experiments I described earlier for uh, for uh, organ transplants. Is not really a model for the elephant oh. experiments. Uh, ah, no, okay. That wasn't its objective. It, you can no. use it as a model. It, it, it is very related. So the way we're doing both experiments is very similar, but they have different uh, goals, mm -hmm. and neither is a model for the other. So okay. uh, in the sense of a model system, which is only a model. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the, in the pigs, we edited 42 genes. We think it might be a similar number, probably a few mm -hmm. more for the elephant. Um, and like I said, we now have 2,000 healthy pigs running around uh, that are edited in 42 places. So that shows we can do it and they, and they can be healthy. And this is all germline. Um, and we edited just any old cell, basically, and it could be fetal fibroblasts, uh, take the nucleus out of that and implant it into an egg. Uh, that should be the same process in elephants. So we can edit, uh, edit elephant cells. Uh, without having to mess around with embryos until we're done editing. So even if it's a lot of edits, the so-called multiplex editing, we can test it, make sure that it's that the edits are what we want, nothing off target that we care about, uh, and we can even do a few physiological tests. Now, some of those involve uh, resurrecting ancient genes. So two, two ancient genes have already been resurrected. Um, we're aiming for mainly for cold resistance, and so those two genes have been shown to be cold resistant. Um, and probably another 40 or 100 more um, to be done. And then there are other things that are not necessarily present in modern or ancient uh, populations. So, for example, uh, we're trying to make them resistant to a, a nearly extinction level viral threat, which is uh, EEHV. And we want to do that either by this recoding that I just described, which will make them resistant to all viruses, or maybe something a little more limited like a... Um, a neutralizing antibody or a, a neutralizing CRISPR um, to, to deal with this one herpes virus. Um, but in any case, so that's, you can think of that as synthetic rather than ancient or modern. But we're getting the best of all worlds. Even in the, among modern species, we can look for the rare individual elephants that, that uh, have no tusks. Uh, they're, they're quite healthy, and, and their, sh their short or absent tusks make them resistant to poachers. Un, unattractive to poachers, and so we would like some of our mammoth-like, cold-resistant elephants to not only have, you know, the the woolly hair and the uh, uh, fat deposits and short ears, small ears uh, 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 of the ancients. We want them to also have a, the ability to have either long or short tusks, depending on whether they're out in the wild or whether they're under protective custody. Um, and that's that's another synthetic thing that we would want. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the the um, plan for the elephant, which is really to help rescue an endangered species. The Asian elephant is endangered in part by this virus, um, but in also in part because it doesn't have enough land that's se separate from humans. While the Arctic is has, you know, ten to twenty million square kilometers of land that is nowhere near a human being. Um, that's just waiting for them to repopulate it and help sequester carbon is a pretty big bonus. <laughs> In fact, probably the major motivation at this point. Right. Yes. Yes. I, I saw that. Um, but we're, we're, we're running out of time. So, so thank you. I, that just sounds like, but you've done two out of uh, quite a lot of number of genes that you need to, old genes that you need to bring back. So that sounds like a, kind of a lot of work. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very similar to what we do with the pig. Uh, it, right. You know, it, uh, I'm confident that it'll, it goes very quickly once you have the list of genes. I think I think the more serious uncertainty is about um, uh, getting uh, embryo development to occur in vitro. Ah. That's a different story for a different day. <laughs> yeah, a longer story. Yeah, right. I'm sure it will. Be. You, um, would you so, mind uh, sharing your your personal protocol for staying healthy? Well, I don't think I have any particularly exotic uh, components. Uh, 
I eat, you know, exercise. I, I'm a vegan, have a vegan diet, which I think uh, tends to uh, where I make sure that I'm getting all the nutrients uh, like omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin B12 and uh, um, from vegan sources. And, uh, you know, I have very, very slight pre-diabetic uh, tendencies, uh, hemoglobin A1C. Uh, so I'm taking metformin uh, and I have uh, high cholesterol or had high cholesterol. And so the combination of the vegan diet plus uh, statin um, mm -hmm. is indicated my father uh, had it as well, and, and he had a triple bypass, and, and complications led to his uh, early death. So, uh, so I'm particularly attuned to the to the um, those those. I also have a, from from my genome. I learned that I have a, I have an explanation for all sorts of respiratory problems I had when I was young, and still have. Um, and so, so those three things are genetic. Uh, components that have, that fortunately have, preventative medicine uh, strategies. Right. Excellent. So can you share what, what is the most kind of exciting thing that your lab is working on right now? Well, we've gone through quite a few of the <laughs> most exciting <laughs> things. Uh, I, I'm, I, I don't want to rank the ones that we have okay. so far. I can add to it. Uh, uh, that we're, we're, we have just published two papers on how we can reprogram, back to epigenetic reprogram, we can reprogram stem cells to be almost any kind of cell, mm -hmm. uh, either very young cells or very mature cells of any type. So we can make uh, oligodendrocytes, neurons, uh, astrocytes, uh, uh, endothelial cells, liver cells, and so forth on demand and, and make them in increasingly complex uh, collections, not yet, uh, you know, a perfectly formed and functioning kidney, but uh, that we have to so far get from the pigs. But uh, but we're moving in that direction, and we're getting uh, better at it fast. So that we, we call it the TFO for the tr we have a complete the world's first complete transcription factor library of all the human transcription factors, and this allows us basically to have 1,700 switches that we can um, play with to get. Um, different recipes. We have about 300 uh, recipes for 300 different cell types so far. So I would add that to our, our list and it probably will have implications for, um, you know, healthy uh, aging, aging reversal. Right. Yeah, no, that sounds really exciting. I, I will look for that paper. So, so that, that's, that was published, you said? Uh, yeah, there, there are two papers. Uh, the first, the, the, the main one is, has, um, first author is NG, is his last name is mm. pronounced mm, it's e yeah. uh, uh, ng yeah. like nanogram yeah right okay uh, i will definitely search for those um so can you just tell people where they can find out uh information wh about what's going on in your lab uh well so our lab website is arep arep.med.harvard.edu oh. uh, and then there's there's uh, quite a bit going on that, that didn't fit in the margins of this particular t uh, conversation. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I, I noticed that. There's so much. Uh, are you on social media? Do you, do you tweet or anything? I, I do. Uh, uh, it, it's at GeoChurch. OK, Maybe excellent. We, we, we will link to them. We will link to that. Okay. So um, uh, Professor Church, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And you've been very generous with your time. And that was uh, a really excellent conversation. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it too. Thank you. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.